So today we're going to be going through the process of setting up your files ready for painting in Substance Painter. Now this is under the presumption that you'll be making a high poly version of your model for better bakes in Substance Painter. For this demonstration we're going to be using this oil can that I made. So first of all we need to cover how to get the best results from your low poly mesh through ZBrush and finally baking in Substance Painter. So here is the original uh, first low poly mesh that I made in Maya. And before this can go into Substance Painter, we need to add some constraining edges. And when we subdivide in Substance Painter, it tends to warp the mesh. So if we just click on this here and then hit three on the keyboard, we can see this subdivision happening. And this will be pretty much the same as what will happen in, in ZBrush. So you can see we've lost a lot of detail around these hard edges and our nice crisp edges around there have gone soft and lost all shape. So this is obviously very undesirable and to stop this from happening we need to add constraining edges. So if we come back here and then grab our multi-cut tool and add an edge around here and then hit three again, we can see that the edge underneath has become much sharper than it was before and we have lost that curve that was happening last time. Uh, now we just need to go around the whole model doing that and we can either use the multi-cut tool or we can select the edges that we want to be sharper and bevel them edges and turn chamfer off so that we just get a new edge either side of the edge that we want to be sharp. Now to get a sharper edge you just simply need to put these edges closer to the original edge and to get a soft edge you move them further away and this will support that edge when it's subdivided and you'll get a nice neat model in ZBrush without any distortion and as close as possible to the original shape of the mesh. So here we can see I have set up my different objects on layers in Maya. Using the channel box slash layer editor I have different layers here and I've put different models into this to represent the different stages of this oil can. So we turn the low poly off by hitting the V button and go to the next one which is for me high poly support. We can see the supporting edges that I've placed all around this model. And you can see I've done it on every single edge, even the little bevels that I've got around the caps because I want all these to be nice and sharp once it's smooth. So if I smooth that now you can see that this creates a nice soft edge but also it's just sharp enough to create um, a nice bake. And I've done that to the whole model. Now this process does take a long time and obviously it takes longer the more complex your model is and the more extrudes and stuff like that you have because you do need to get that new edge topo topological flow as neat as possible so that you don't get any errors in the smoothing. But if you just keep hitting three and one on your keyboard you can go back and forth between the smooth version and the low poly version so that you can see how that's smoothing out and try and get it as accurate as possible. Once this is done, you can take this into ZBrush and you can then start to subdivide it with no errors. Now, if you didn't do supporting edges, you could use creasing in ZBrush um, and you could also turn off the smart subdivision uh, algorithm, which just subdivides the polys as are. Now, this would be fine for a very hard surface model, but for a model with curves in it, what you'd end up getting is all these curves that you've got in this low poly here would end up being a hard edge and you'd get this checkered look that you'd have to try and smooth out, which is very difficult to do neatly and it would end up just being a mess. Okay, so once you've subdivided that and you've made your high poly in ZBrush. You can decimate that high poly and bring it back into Maya and put it on a new layer like this. So you should end up with something like this. So we can see I've got some warping in it. I've, I've done some scratches and I've also sculpted the padding of this out as well. Uh, now there's a few areas like this where I've warped this this edge here. And that what will that do is actually bring it quite far away from the original low poly. So if we have a look at the low poly here, you can see that the warping of the high poly actually is not very much aligned with that low poly. Um, and some areas are worse than others. Uh, so to increase accuracy of the bake, what I've done is because I've just subdivided this in ZBrush, I have still got my lowest poly in ZBrush and that lowest poly in ZBrush will have warped a little bit. So what I do is take that low poly out of ZBrush, export it back into Maya and use that as my new low poly. So now if we look here, I've got this one for sub and this new low poly 
if we get that up and the original low poly we can see the difference so this is a new one in green and this is the original old one and you can see how much it's warped in zbrush to match the new sculpt so we don't need that original low poly anymore we've just got this new low poly that more accurately represents our high poly so there are some areas that will struggle to be baked neatly and you might get some um, clipping and stuff like that if you don't add a few more loops so for example here if we take a look at the original low poly we have this looped edge here now this already has a few extra loops in it that will would, would need to be removed anyway but also has this 90 degree bevel and in the higher poly one we have a few more extra loops and also this bevel along here now this is solely to support the baking of the high to low poly this is just to match this up a bit more closely to the high poly and what we can do is after we finish painting and after we've got this back into Maya ready for to be saved as our final asset we can come in and just delete some of these loops to get it to a lower poly and the the new normal map will move to accommodate that and it will be very neat so the reason we have to add more edges to the low poly to match up to the high poly in substance painter is because on curves is where you will get the most difference and the most noticeable noticeable results or errors and so for example if this curve is our low poly and this is our high poly you can see there's quite a big difference between the separate points of the curve and so you what you'll get is clipping here so you'll get a bit of the normal map baked through here but as it gets to the extents here you'll get some clipping and it'll just look quite a mess one of the things you can do is try to get a nice in between of the um, scale of this so you get some clipping outwards and some clipping inwards but you'll still get uh, not a very neat edge to this top edge so what we can do is increase the um, amount of edges on this one say if I can increase it to 30 and this will better accommodate that high poly and you'll get a much neater bake and then what you can do once you've finished you can come back into this in Maya and just delete out some of them extra loops um, and you'll end up with a much nicer result and you'll understand that more as you come to them problems in your own work Okay, so we have our low poly and we have our high poly ready in Maya to be exported into Substance Painter. Now in Substance Painter, there are two ways of baking neatly. One is to use a mesh name prefix and the other one is to use the exploding method. Now we're gonna use the exploding method, but just a little rundown on the mesh name prefix. What you basically do is you find your low poly and what we do is we go through each low poly item and we name it correctly. So for this example, it is uh, top wire and we give it the prefix low and then we go to our high poly version find the same one name it the exact same thing and give that the prefix high and you do that for all the items on your model in the low and high poly and then when you come to bake this in substance painter it will find the low and high poly and match them two names together and then bake them individually on top of each other now you might be wondering why you need to bother doing this and that's because when you come to bake stuff in substance painter anything near each other will will project fruit onto the other item so for example where this curve comes around here what we'll get is the normal map the occlusion map the thickness every different map that belongs to this piece will bake down onto this so you'll have a little black spot with all that information baked onto here so if we ever wanted to move this you'd leave an impression of the original there and the same for the caps the same for this stuff things that might want to be animated obviously are the most important because once they move in the animation you'll be left with an impression of where it used to be so this is all quite nasty and there's some things that you might want to leave an impression like these buttons i want to leave an impression around here so that we can find them edges and fill them with dirt and stuff like that but a lot of this i won't want to have be like that um, so the best method I like to use is the exploder method and this basically is to move all the pieces away from each other bake them and then move them all back into place after they've been baked and the reason I like to do it this way is that when they're all away from each other it's easy to check over in substance painter to make sure that there's no errors now to do this we need to get the high and low poly up at the same time select the two pieces at the same time and move them away and then we do that to all the different pieces of the model and once we've done that, we export both the high and low poly separately and they knowing that they will line up perfectly in Substance Painter. And because we we'll want to go between the together version and the exploded version, a really good way of doing this is to animate them apart. So here I've already done this. You can see if I move the slider, 
they're animated apart so I can make my changes, export this and I can always bring it back together again so that I know they're exactly in place. And this is really easy to do. All you need to do is select your entire models, both low and high poly, and you want to go into here and you want to add a keyframe. And you can do this by hitting S on the keyboard. So if I just move to a random place here on the keyframe, on the time slider and hit S, you can see a little red keyframe appears. Once you've added your initial keyframe, you can go over here and tick on the auto keyframe. Now make sure that you remember to untick this after you've finished. But once you've ticked on the auto keyframe, we can go to anywhere on the slider, move these around and it will auto keyframe that position. So now if we move the slider back, you can see that moves to that new position. So go around each piece of your model and make sure that you've moved these away from each other. Not too far away, you don't want them really far away because this can cause issues in itself, but you just want to make sure that there's no space, they're not close enough to each other to cause any issues with the baking or shadowing on top of each other. Now, one other thing that you must make sure that you do is to make sure that everything in your Maya scene has the exact same material. So you can assign a new material or assign an original one, just make sure that it's all got the same Lambert on it or the same material, no matter what that is. And this is because when we come to re-import the low uh, together and the low exploded, we might end up with different texture sets. And to avoid that, you must make sure that everything you export has the exact same material. So once you've done that, we can hide the low poly, uh, the high poly, we can select all the low poly and we can go to file, export selection. And we want to export this as an OBJ and we can save this as oil, can low exp for explode okay so once we've exported that we can then go to the high poly select all that and go to file export selection and we want to export this as oil can high exploded Okay, so now we have both the low and high poly exported in the exploded position. What we want to do is go back to our timeline and go back to the keyframe one, so they're all together. And this time we want to select the low together. And we can just export this as oil can low. And again, the same for the high poly, select all that. File, export selection. And we want this to be oil can high. Now we've got all our files ready, prepped and exported, uh, ready for baking in Substance Painter.